Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. In today's video, we're gonna be creating the snake that you're looking at right now. This tutorial is broken up into four parts. So in part one, we're gonna be modeling the snake. Then for part two, we're gonna be unwrapping the UVs. Part three, we're gonna focus on creating the snake's texture and lighting our scene. And in part four, we're gonna be animating our snake. So let's get started on this, here we go. So the first thing I did was I was kind of looking for some reference images for modeling the snake and I found some great reference for the snake's head. Uh, I found this on Google Images. I'll, I'll put this into the description so you'll be, you'll be able to download it yourselves. Uh, but I was unable to find like a body that was stretched out and I need it to be stretched out. Uh, for you know obviously for the initial pose I need it to be stretched out but I couldn't actually find a stretched out snake so what I did was I just went into Illustrator and I dragged in my snake head image and then I just kind of used the pen tool to you know just kind of trace well I say trace but I just kind of imagined what a snake body would look like so I kind of dipped down and went up a bit higher here near the middle then dip down again and then kind of curved off at the end and then I just did the same for the head instead I used the pen tool and I just drew a straight line for the top part and then I just used the uh, width of my stroke so I went up here and set the width up to whatever the width was at the end of the head and then I just went and used my width tool and I said right so it's probably going to be a bit skinnier here at the neck and it's going to be a bit fatter here in the middle and skinnier then at the end and that was kind of how I went about creating the the reference for my snake so what I'll do is I'll I'll um well I'm going to be exporting this for my reference well I have already and I will put this uh, reference image in the description below so I have it here as a JPEG so you'll be able to download that in the description below so let's hop into Cinema 4D and what we can do is we can start modeling our head so I'm just going to do a file save as and I'm just going to call this snake model. And I'm going to create a cube. And this is just going to be the head. We're going to model this up to look like the snake head. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go into my top view. And go to options here and configure. And now I'll be able to load in my reference image. Uh, as long as back your back tab here is selected uh, we can load in our reference image okay so we need to set the rotation here to minus 90 and let's bring it up along the Y and move it over we want to center our reference image into our into our cube there so it's centered in our world so get it as get it close enough you know it doesn't have to be uh, perfect and then hop into your right view and let's do the same again load in our reference image and let's bring it along the X here and center it up and we want to bring it down along the Y so that the body of our snake the the bottom of the body is touching our floor we haven't created one yet but if we did it would be here so make sure that the snake is just resting on the floor and so if you accidentally go out of your viewport, you can just, or your configure uh, options, you can just hit shift V in your keyboard or go to options here and select it there. And now we can bring it down 
along the y. 2 minus 6 on my one anyway. Okay, so we also want to bring the transparency up to 80% and do the same in our top view. And now we've got a reference images rocking, so now we're ready to start modeling. So let's jump into our right view first of all. And let's bring this cube down closer to our snake's head size. Okay. So what we can do to make sure that our snake head uh, cube, I'm just going to call this snake head, snake head, to make sure that it's going to be on the floor is we can, first of all, let's get it closer to our snake head size there. And we can press C on our keyboard or just come over here and make it editable and now what we can do is we can use the axis center tool here now if you can't see that you can press shift C and you can search for it axis center and it's right here now we want to set the axis here to be to be down at zero on our RY. So let's just bring that down to minus 100. So that's going to set our axis here to be at the bottom of our cube. And now what we're able to do is set our, our snake head uh, coordinates on the Y to be zero and that'll put it on the floor. Okay, so let's go into our top view and let's kind of match up the width of our head okay now i'm just going to be jumping in and out of views here and if you don't know how to do that it's basically just middle mouse clicking anywhere in any of the screens and if i want to go into my perspective view i'll middle mouse click it'll jump in there middle mouse click to jump in and out of screens so I'm just going to start moving this cube, scaling it, and um, and uh, moving it to get the shape of my snake head. And now what I want to do is do some cutting. So we're going to cut. Use KL on your keyboard to select the loop path cut tool, and let's with our edges mode selected. Let's figure out where we want to put in our cuts. So let's put in one let's say here and one here and one here okay so again you don't have to be exact just more or less where the the peak of his head is kind of where his where his head kind of slopes down here just to the right of his eyeball and another one to the left of his eyeball and then obviously yeah, so that's all of them. And I want to put one that goes across the middle, but we'll do that actually later. What we can do now is start moving points, moving vertices. So go into, vert into points mode, and let's go to rectangle selection. And now we can start moving points to match up to our reference image. So I'm going to go ahead and move these points to match up. And a cool way of switching between the previous uh, tool and the current tool is using space. So if I select scale, now if I go space, it's going to go back to my rectangular selection tool. So that's pretty handy when you're doing stuff like this. Now I'm going to jump into my top view and I'm going to do the same. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select these points and instead of going like this, selecting this one and doing it like that, you're not going to maintain the symmetry. 
um, we can select both of these points, these vertices here, and go into the scale tool, and then we can just scale these down, and then they'll pull in to meet each other in the center. So that's really handy. So I'm going to do that there. I'm using space to go back to my previous tool. And I'm doing it here. Space again to go back to my rectangle selection tool. And then space to go back to scale. Okay. So let's have a look at our snake head. See what it's looking like. So we're going to be putting it into a subdivision surface. So select your snake object, hold down Alt, and then add a subdivision surface. Holding down Alt, it automatically add the snake head um, object as a child of the subdivision surface. So right now we got a, you know, you could argue that it's a snake head, but it's kind of, it could be a bullet as well. Or, uh, or a bread a bap roll or whatever so we got to do a bit more work on this so let's press MB on our keyboard to show our lines and let's see what we're gonna do so what we can do is let's just deactivate our subdivision surface for the minute and let's go KL on our keyboard to open the loop path cut tool and let's make a cut directly along the center now don't worry about being exact where you put your cut because even if it's not on the center you can just click and then you can use this to this this button here that'll center your cut i'm going to do the same here so just click anywhere along one of these lines and then we can use this button here to center our cut again. So what I want to do with this new cut is with my edges mode selected and scale tool, I'm going to press UL on my keyboard and I'm going to select that edge, that loop. And then I'm going to select my scale tool and I'm just going to drag this along the X to kind of fatten out his cheeks. So now if we go back in, see that's looking a bit better. Turn back off our subdivision surface. And what we can start doing now is modeling our eyes. So we need to groove, we need to cut out some eye sockets. Uh, so let's go into our... So you can see as we increase the width of that loop there, so let me just undo it. You can see what's happened. So we need to fix that. So back into your top view, select your snake head object, go into points mode, and let's just use our rectangular selection to rectangle selection tool to grab all of these points. Hold down shift and grab all of these points use your scale tool and let's scale those in I'm just turning on my subdivision surface so that I can get a more accurate um, result so let's go back out okay so now that that's fixed we can go back to modeling our eye sockets Let's turn back off our subdivision surface and jump into the right view. Now the eye is here, so I'm going to be working with this polygon. So go into polygon mode, select your snake head, and we can press 9 on our keyboard to use our direct selection tool. Just select that polygon. Let's go into perspective view, and we're going to select the direct opposite, um, the adjacent polygon there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my inner extrude tool, which is I in your keyboard. And let's just hover over any of the selected polygons and click and drag. Now we're dragging inwards, not outwards. We're going to go to a value. You can see the offset is moving here, so we can actually control it with the offset here. 
So I'm going to set this to be two centimeters and I'm going to do it again. So I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to go to 1.3 centimeters, maybe 1.5. Okay. So next I'm going to use my extrude tool. So hit D in your keyboard. That'll open up your extrude tool. Now you can just click and drag and we're going to go inwards to a value of about to an offset of about minus 2.6 okay so now let's grab our scale tool and let's just scale that along the z-axis so we don't want to scale it too far because it's actually not working out um, it's kind of pushing it outwards, but it's still, this will still work. So the eye is going to be deeper here, but it's going to be a bit more shallow here. So that actually might work once we turn on our subdivision surface. Yeah, so that doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, we can do it even a little bit more. Okay, so now we got our eye sockets. What we need to do now is we need to kind of create a brow, like an eyebrow or a snake eyebrow. So it's going to kind of, you know, we're going to push out the geometry a bit so that it's going to kind of cover over his eyeball a bit. Um, so let's turn off the subdivision surface object. And what I want to do now is, now what I could do is I could go into my polygon uh, mode and then grab this polygon and this one. And do the same over here. Push this out a bit. And bring it down a bit. Let's see what that looks like. So let's push it out a bit more. And bring it down a bit more. So that's... Mm, no, I'm not really... I'm not liking that. So let's see, maybe if we pull it up a bit first. Let's try dragging it out and then bringing it down. Let's see what that looks like. It's looking a bit better. We got some protruding brows there. Um, But his eyes are looking a bit thin, so I might just select these two polygons and these two also. I'm holding down shift to select several of the polygons there. Let's turn back on my subdivision and I'm just going to drag this down a bit. Yeah, okay. So I'm happy with that. Now we need to create some eyeballs. So let's see. Let's jump back. Yeah, we can do this in perspective. So I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to scale it down to about to about a radius of five centimeters for now. And now let's just get this positioned. Okay, so we can increase the segments to about 50 and let's scale it down a bit. So I'm actually going to go for a radius of 3.5 and I want to get the position kind of, I don't know, I'm going to eyeball this. Uh, no pun intended there now at all. So I want it to be in a position where I feel it looks cool. So I'm happy enough with that. Now we can use a symmetry object to just copy one over exactly um, to the opposite side there. So with my sphere select, let's actually rename this to eyeball. It's going to bring it down to the bottom there for no particular reason. 
and I'm going to create a symmetry object, drag it down, and then put my eyeball as a child of it. So now that's created another eyeball in the exact opposite position. Cool. So maybe I could bring out these eyeballs even a little bit more. Select the eyeball. I could actually bring that out a little bit more so it kind of bulges out a bit more. Looks a bit cooler maybe. Mm. Maybe not. Okay. No, I like it. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go for about there. Again, this is all preference, how you, how you want it to look yourself. So that's our snake head. Mm, one last thing we could do is turn off your subdivision surface, go into direct selection, go into edge mode, and let's make sure your snake head is selected. Let's grab these three edges here and just bring it down a little bit. Now turn back on your subdivision, bring it down even more to give it that kind of, you know, a bit more shape and it's a bit more snake-like, kind of dips down. Just looks a bit cooler, I think. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. What we're going to be doing as well is in our subdivision surface, we're going to be cranking this up to three. So it's going to be a lot smoother. But for now, we're leaving it at two. And we need to create our snake body. So let's go and turn off our subdivision surface. We're going to grab some polygons. So we're going to grab, select your snake head object, grab this one, this one, this one, and this one. Use D in your keyboard, and then we can just extrude outwards. So we're going to set the initial extrusion here. In the offset, we can set it to 20 centimeters. Let's jump into our right view. And now we want to repeat that process, but we don't have to keep doing it and setting in 20. So what we can do is we can just use the new transform button here. And let's just do that a bunch of times until we get right to the end of our snake. So I'm just um, going to back into my perspective view here. Turn back on my subdivision surface object. And this is what we got so far. Okay. So now we need to start using our reference objects to, you know, push and pull the points around to get this matched up with our reference uh, image. So with Snakehead selected, I'm going to start working in my right view first. You can do both of them at the same time if you want. I like to just focus on one side at a time for, for snakes anyway. Um, so I'm going to go into rectangle selection, make sure point mode selected and my snake head object is selected. And I'm going to just start dragging these points. Oh, also make sure that only select visible elements is turned off. So I'm not going to make you watch me do this because it's pretty basic and you guys might get a bit bored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here and I will join you guys when you have reached the tail and then we can work on the tail together. Um, oh no, what I will do is I will join you guys when I'm almost at the tail and then we can work on the top view together. So I'm going to pause the video right now.
Okay, so I'm getting fairly close now to the end here of my tail in my right view. So I'm almost there. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that. Don't want to mess around with it too much. And now I'm going to jump into my top view. So middle mouse click and then top view, middle mouse click again. And now we're going to do that all over again, but for the top view. So again, I'll... Um, I'm actually going to start the detail this time. So I'm going to use my rectangle selection tool, grab all those points, go into the, my scale tool, and then we can just drag those inwards like that. Now I'm going to use spacebar to go to my previous select, pre previously selected tool, spacebar again, and I'm just going to repeat that over and over again until I have reached the head and I will join you guys at the head. Okay, so almost there guys at the head. Um it didn't take me long to get here. It took me like two seconds, I swear. Uh how long did it take you? But uh almost there now and I don't wanna rush too much because I took my sweet ass time just to get here, so I'm not gonna rush at the last hurdle and mess it up. Okay, so that's it. Okay. So as you can see, it's not an exact uh, replica of my reference, but it's going to be symmetrical and it's going to be fine. So I'm going to go back into my perspective view. And let's see. Okay, so our snake is a bit skinny. So we need to make him a bit fatter 
So to do that, deactivate your subdivision surface object, select snake head, and this is now just snake. And we're gonna select we're gonna press U on our UL on our keyboard to use our loop selection. Make sure edge mode is selected. And let's just grab this loop here and hope when we scale it out it doesn't affect our eye too much. Let's just keep an eye on our eye. Uh, scale tool, and I'm just going to drag that outwards. So it is kind of affecting our eye. So let's see if I drag this out to about 140%. Turn back on my subdivision surface editor. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not doing anything good for our eye so I might just make a compromise and bring it back in a little bit and I might grab the so I'm gonna go UL again and I'm gonna grab this center loop here and I'm just gonna scale it down a bit okay so that is our snake He's a fine looking snake. His eyeballs aren't as bulgy as they used to be. So let's bulge them out a bit. Select your eyeball object. Go into your move tool and let's just bring out those eyeballs a bit more. Bring them down a bit as well. Yeah, that's, that's better. Okay, so that's it. There's our snake, guys. So in the next video, we're going to, need, going to be unwrapping him. Uh, we're going to be unwrapping the UVs so that we can apply our texture. So now that we have our snake modeled up, the next thing we need to do is unwrap the UVs. And before we do that, I just want to show you why we need to do that. So let's create a new material and open it up. Go into the color channel and let's add a tiles shader. You can leave it as is, red and white. And let's just apply that to our snake. So straight away, we're seeing a problem. Now, when we modeled this snake, we started off with a cube and then we extruded out. Now, if we jump into our texture tag here, you're seeing, you can see we're using the UVW mapping projection mode. Now, that's all very well and good to use on primitive objects, but the minute you start editing those, like we extruded out from it, that's just not going to work. So we could say try a flash projection mode, and then we could go into our texture mode here, Hit R on your keyboard, we could rotate this 90 degrees and then rotate it another 90 degrees so it's projecting down along the Y. And that's given us a pretty good result. So no problems there really, but there is a problem. Uh, there will be a problem. Let's just try and move our snake. So we move our snake all very well and good. But as you know, we intend to animate this snake. So we want him kind of, you know, moving along in an S shape, just like in our start video. And the easiest way we're going to be able to do that is by using a spline wrap deformer. So I have an example spline already set up. So I'm just going to grab that and copy it into my snake model scene. I'm going to make the spline wrap a child of the snake object object and I'm going to drag this example spline down into the spline field here in my spline wrap deformer. Now our spline our snakes looking like a country now so we need to fix that. So in your object tab just set the mode to keep length and set the axis here to minus Z. And our snake's upside down, so we just need to go down and find rotation, 
your own might be rolled upwards just click on the triangle to roll it down and set the banking to 180 degrees that'll flip our snake the right way up now you can see it's messed up our texture again and also if we try and animate this using the method we intend to use going forward which is going to be animating the offset you'll see that our snake is just passing through the texture our texture isn't actually sticking to our snake so that's the why uh, so let's move on to the how so I'm just gonna remove this spline wrap from my snake object I'm gonna keep that for later and I'm gonna bring this example spline down to the bottom just to keep everything organized let's hide off those so the first thing we want to do is well if you haven't done so already create a new material make sure that you add a, a tile shader into your color channel and then apply that material to your snake object now I also want to make it so that when I move my snake my eyeballs are gonna follow and stay in the same position so what I need to do is make our symmetry object which is a parent of the eyeball a child of the snake object and then use my middle mouse click to select the snake object that will automatically select all of the children right click and go down to connect objects and delete now that's gonna make our snake body and our eyeballs one object so that's great but we need to separate them for texturing so let's go to our snake now you can see that after we hit connect objects and delete it's created two selection tags so the first one if we go into polygon mode and click on restore selection make sure that the first selection tag is selected you'll see that it's just selecting all of the polygons on our body so we can rename this to body and if we click on our second selection tag click on restore selection you'll see that this is just going to be selecting our eyeballs so we can rename this to eyes okay so now we can apply our so let's delete these textures off for now let's grab our body selection tag click on restore selection make sure snake the snake object is selected and now we can just drag this material onto our selection okay and let's create a new material call it eyes select our eyes selection tag and click on restore selection make sure the snake is selected in your objects manager and now we can just drag our eyes material onto our eyes so now we have our eyes which have been separated from our body by selection tags so now we can control the color of our eyes so we can set it to whatever color we like and we can also control our snakes um, body material separately okay so we're gonna move on to actually unwrapping the UVs now so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select our snake and then we're gonna select our body selection tag and let's click on restore selection now we want to select our texture tag which is applied to our body so let's just rename this body so our texture tag that's called body we want to right click on that now before we do anything we need to actually set our 
projection mode here to flat. And let's select our snake object, go into texture mode, and now let's rotate the projection so that it's facing downwards. With your rotation tool, just drag this around to minus 90 degrees, and then drag it around here to be minus 90. So that our texture is going to be projecting down. Now, let's reselect all of our polygons. So you can just go back into polygon mode, and that'll reselect your previous selection. And now we can try that step again. So right click on the, the body texture tag, and then go down to assign UVW coordinates. Okay. So the next step is to select our seam. So we need to use the go into edges mode. And we're going to select the, the edges where we want our seam to be. So let me just show you what I mean by that. If I go into this unwrap UV example. So let's just imagine this is our snake. His head's been cut off and most of his body. So when I say our seam, I mean this line here. This is where I want my seam to be because it's going to be underneath the snake. So we're not going to see it. So the way we want to unwrap our snake is kind of like this. This is how we want to unwrap our snake's UV, just like that. So let's jump back into our snake model scene. And let's now select our edges that we want our seam to be on. So a quick way to do this is to just press UL, UL on your keyboard. Then we can select the loop. Then we can jump into top mode and we can use our rectangle selection tool and turn on only select visible elements. Now to deselect all of these edges along the top, just hold down control, click and drag, and that will deselect all of the top edges there. We can jump back into perspective mode, and now you can see that we just have the bottom edge um, selected. So that's where we want our seam to be. Let's actually deselect this edge here, go into your live selection mode, and let's deselect that. We don't want to see the seam, so as long as it's under our snake, we're not going to see it. Let's make sure that it's, there, there's no seam visible on the back of our snake as well. So let's turn that off. Okay, so we have our seam selected. Now we need to select the points on our snake that we don't want to move while we're unwrapping the UV. So I'll jump back into my unwrap UV example scene. And again, this is our snake. Now, we don't want the top part of our snake to move when we unwrap the UVs. We, we just want to unwrap, obviously, along the seam, and we want it to unwrap like this. So the top part of the map doesn't need to move at all. It's just the sides and the bottom that's going to unwrap like that. So we need to select, we need a way to select the top part of the snake so that when it comes to unwrapping the UV, we can tell it that these parts should stay in the same position. So we can jump back into our snake model and go into points mode and now we can jump into our top view and select our rectangle selection make sure only select visible elements is turned on and let's just click and drag now that's going to select all of our vertices along the top of our snake but it's also going to select some vertices that we don't want so let's grab our live selection tool and let's hold down control to deselect all these points here that we don't want to be selected here. So 
I'm using my square brackets on my keyboard to increase the size of my direct selection circle there. And we have all these points along the, along the edge that we have selected that we don't want. So press UL on your keyboard and then we can hold down control and click and that will deselect all of those points along that loop. So now that we have all these points selected along the top of our snake, we're ready to unwrap the UVs. And again, the reason we're selecting these points is because we're telling the we're telling Cinema 4D that when we unwrap the UVs, these are the points that shouldn't move at all. They should be fixed in place. The unwrapping is going to occur along the bottom and along the side of our snake but all of these selected points here are going to remain in the same position just like in our unwrap example here this is our seam and our unwrapping is going to happen along here and along the side of our snake but the selected vertices along the top aren't going to move at all so it's going to be something like that. Let's go back into our snake model scene. And we are ready to unwrap this. So let's go into our UV edit layout. And what we need to do is go into UV, go into the UV mapping tab here. And you need to make sure the pin border points is deselected and pin to neighbors is also deselected. Make sure the pinpoint selection is selected. So that's what's going to tell our vertice, our selected vertices to be pinned, to not move. And cut selected edges should also be ticked. And that's what's going to tell our edges that we have selected along the bottom of our snake that's what's going to tell the cut to be along here that's where our seam is going to be so just before we click on apply just select polygon mode so that's going to select all the polygons and now watch what happens over here in our UV map click apply and you can see that that unwraps nicely there so now we can jump back into our um, standard layout and now if we turn back on our spline wrap and our example spline make the spline wrap a child of the snake and then drag the example spline down into the spline field while it was already there and let's set the banking back to Let's see. Oh no, the snake isn't upside down. The banking's already set to 180. So now you can see that we have a nice UV map set up for our snake. And the seam is hidden away underneath. So we're not even going to see that when it comes to animating this. There's going to be a floor. The only part of the snake we're going to see is the top part here. And lastly, we're able to animate the offset and our texture is going to be stuck to our snake. Okay guys, so next part of this is we want to create a material for our snake. And we're also going to light up our scene. So first of all, I want to bring our snake back into our shot. And let's just get rid of this camera. And let's find a nice, a nice uh, vantage point so that we can texture up our snake. Just create a new camera, make it active. And I'm going to use a protection tag so that we can't move that around. Cool. Now, I want to create a floor. 
So it's going to be a plane. I'm just going to increase the scale of that right up so we can see the uh, the edge of it. And you can see that our snake isn't actually on the floor. So we're going to be moving our spline. Because remember that our spline wrap is wrapping our snake around this spline. Which I'm going to rename to spline. And we can control the position of our snake with the spline. So just going to make sure model mode is selected. Now I can drag this up and down. So I'm going to hop into my right view. Shift V so I can turn off my picture there. Don't need that anymore. And let's make sure that our snake is flush with our floor. Okay, so let's grab our snake, or our spline, I should say. Let's just drag this down to line up with our floor. Now you can see that our snake's body kind of raises up. It rises up there in the center, but we're not going to see that, so we, we don't need to worry about that. Um, so that's kind of flush, that's nice and flush, back into perspective view, and let's start editing our body material, so let's jump into it, and I'm going to turn on, first of all I want to get rid of our tiles, we don't need those anymore, and now let's load in our snake skin to um, image so this you'll be able to download this from the description below it's basically a vector that I found online and I exported it as a JPEG and um, it's basically black and white and you got some scales and it looks kind of like bricks right now so we don't want it to look like bricks it's looking like bricks because each scale is way too big to be a snake scale. So what we need to do is we need to go into our UV edit layout. Select our snake and then go to UV polygons. Let's try and find this. Okay, so how I found that there, it wasn't visible. So just like in the viewport, you can use 1, 2, and 3 to zoom in and out and rotate the camera. Um, so the same applies over here. You can use um, 2 to zoom in and out, and you can use 1 to pad around. So just find your UV map. And once you have it found, let's actually turn off our camera for a second. So then we can actually move around our viewport and we can move around our, our UV map area also. So we want to grab our scale tool and we want to increase the size of our UV map. And in doing so, we're going to reduce the size of these scales. You can see they're getting smaller. So let's go and drag it up. Now I'm not telling you how much to drag it up by. You just have to drag it up until these scales start looking like scales. Now over here you can see that we got these really small scales and over here you got these really big scales. So what we want is for the small scales to be on the bottom of our snake. I'm going to turn off my floor. I'm going to make it invisible. We want these small scales to be running along the bottom of our snake. So what we need to do is we need to move our UV map up and then you'll see that we're able to move our small scales down to the bottom of our snake and we're still getting a lot of small scales up on the side so 
we might need to do a bit more scaling with this. So what we can do is go to our scale tool and go to non-uniform scale. Then if we click right about here and start dragging downwards, dragging down our small scales are going to squish down to the bottom area of our snake. Now I hope this is making sense because it actually doesn't make much sense to me either. I just kind of move the UV map around. I, UV, I move the UV map around and I scale it until I am happy with the position of my image, which is in this case my snake material. So I hope that you can make sense of it and that you can follow along with what I'm doing. So I need to scale this a bit more. I think I'm happy enough with how that's looking. There's still a bit more. You can see the small scales are like pushing up along half of the snake body. And on the other side of the snake, they're kind of only going up about a third of the snake's body. So what we can do is use our move tool. And again, just move our UV map until we're getting it nice and symmetrical. So maybe down a bit further. Let's have a look. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I do not want to mess around with that anymore. So let's leave it as is. Let's jump back into our standard layout. And now we have our snake. He's all uh, scaled up and he's ready to go. And by scaled up, I don't mean increased in size. I mean he has scales that actually don't look like bricks. We can turn back on our floor. And, okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I want to create some lights for our scene. So, I'm going to create a light. And I'm going to go make sure that model mode is selected. And I want to just move this back along the X and up along the Y and over along the Z. I want to make sure that this light uh, type is set to area and I'm going to hit R on my keyboard so that I can rotate this 90 degrees. I'm going to drag this orange circle up so I can reduce the height of this area light and I'm going to drag this orange circle out to increase the width. So if I go into my light, go into the details tab, you can see that we've got the size X set to about 371. The size Y is set to about 75 or 76. In the coordinates tab, it's got the following position values. And I also want to rotate it so that it kind of points towards our snake. Okay, cool. So I'm move it back just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to duplicate this light. And before I do that, I'm going to turn on shadow area and yeah, okay. Now I'm going to duplicate it. I want to click, hold down control, click and drag. Now I don't want it to go in that direction towards the ground. I want to change the coordinate system to world by clicking on this button. And now if I hold down control and drag, it's going to go straight across. So now if I hit R on my keyboard, I can rotate this about 2 or 130 degrees. 
so that it is also pointing at our snake. Hit E on my keyboard so that I can move it back a bit and up. Just back a bit, actually. And make sure that the shadows are turned off for this second light. Light point one, as it's called. Okay, so now that we have two lights set up, we're just going to have actually one more. So let's grab this one, hold down control, drag it up along the Y. We just want this to be pointing down at our snake. So I'm just going to move it kind of above our snake, hit R on my keyboard, and then rotate that roughly about minus 63.5 degrees. And... Just, just make sure that it's uh, pointing down, pointing downwards towards your snake there. Okay, so bear with me two seconds while I drink some tea. Right. Okay. So we have our lights set up. So now let's hop back into our camera. And let's do a render render of this. So this is what we have so far. Not much, but we're going to work with it. This is what we're going to work on. Um, so we're going to jump into our body material. And we are going to clear this. Because we don't want this anymore. Go into your displacement channel. Turn it on. Click on this little triangle here, and let's load in our snake skin uh, image. So that's going to create some displacement in our geometry. But what it's going to do is it's going to raise the white areas. So everywhere there's white, ge the geometry is going to raise. So I can actually show you there. So we don't want this, obviously. We want our geometry to raise along the scales. So we need to invert this. The quick way of doing that is just setting the black point to 1. And the white point to 0. Now you can see that our scales are actually being raised. So we need to fix this, obviously. So we can turn on sub-polygon displacement and turn on round geometry. And let's set the blur offset here to 3%. Let's set the strength to 50 and the height to 3. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so that's looking much better already. We could even turn down the height down to 2 centimeters. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, cool. So next we're going to turn on our, well, our reflectance channel is already turned on. But we want to create a Beckman. Let's turn off the default specular. And now, if we turn on our interactive render region, Let's bring up the quality here up to the max, and let's just let this uh, render for a second. So now you can see that our snake is fully reflective. It kind of looks like tin foil with scales. Uh, so the scales are reflective, and so are the cracks or the grooves between the scales. Now, the only thing we want to be reflective are the scales. We don't want the the grooves between the scales to be reflected. So we can turn off reflection in those grooves. And how do we do that? We can basically just go into our displacement channel and copy this image or shader as it's called. Go into our reflectance channel and then we can create a layer mask. So go down here to layer mask make sure that layer one is selected that's the Beckman that we created and go into your layer mask here and let's load or paste our shader so if we jump in here we can see that the white areas will be reflective and the dark areas will not 
Now, the black areas are kind of, now, the dark areas, I should say, black areas, whatever, they're a bit small or faint or hard to see. We can increase the visibility of those by turning the exposure to one. And now you can see that's going to turn off reflection completely in our grooves, the areas between our scales. And now we can actually affect the color of these. So if we set that to red, we're going to get some red gaps between our scales. But we just want to set it to a nice dark color so that they're going to be pretty much invisible. And that is already looking pretty cool. So, the next thing we're going to do is create a material for our floor. So let's double click in our materials panel and let's rename this to floor. We can close this down and let's add our floor material to our floor object. So it's white right now, but we don't want it to be white. We want it to be black and we want it to be reflective. So go into your reflectance channel and let's turn off default specular and let's add in a Beckman. Let's increase the roughness to be 20%. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so we're getting a lot of grain here, so don't worry about that because that'll disappear the minute we turn on anti-aliasing. It's set to geometry right now. Set that to best, you're going to get rid of all this graininess. But it's just going to take longer to render out, so we're just leaving that till the end. You can see it's actually reducing our graininess quite a bit. But we're going to go back to geometry for now while we're working on our textures. Okay, so we have our floor set up, and you can see that it's, you know, we can see our lights in our floor. We don't want to see our lights in our floor. We don't want our lights to be reflected by our floor. So what we can do is select all of our lights. I held down control there to click on each one of them and select them all. Go into project, the project tab, and let's just drag the floor object down here into object. That's going to exclude our floor from the basically our lights are no longer going to be reflected by our floor so that's kind of what we're looking for that's exactly what we're looking for and again the graininess is going to be reduced uh, once we have anti-aliasing turned on so I just want to hit alt or on my keyboard to turn off my interactive render region and i'm going to select my camera delete this protection tag and i want to find a better angle for this okay so let's go for this let's do a quick render see what that looks like okay Okay, so I'm happy enough with that angle of camera, so I'm going to set a add a protection tag on there. Cool. So let's open up our body material and see what else we can do for this to make it look nice and nice. So Let's see, we'll turn back on our interactive render region, Alt R on your keyboard. And let's see what we got. Okay, so we need to set up some reflective boards. And I don't know if you know what a reflective board is. I actually didn't know what they were. Um, well, I knew what they were in Cinema 40, but I didn't know what they were called. So a reflective board is kind of like things that photographers use to make the light kind of bounce in the way that photographers want the light to bounce, if that makes sense. So you can kind of get the idea, you know. So we're going to create some of these in Cinema 40. So basically, 
we're going to create, let's just deactivate our camera. Altar, turn off your interactive render region. We're going to create some reflective boards, and they're basically just going to be planes, basically. Basically. Um, so we got our plane, we call this reflective board. And we're going to create one material and call it our board material. Leave it at the default color and reflectance and let's just apply that to our reflective board object let's bring down the height here and e on your keyboard so we can move it over and up r on your keyboard to rotate it around so it's pointing at our snake and let's actually hop into the object into the object tab and then we can decrease the height or the width actually is what we're looking at let's line it up with our snake so e in your keyboard let's move it over we want to make it about the same length as our snake so i can just drag it out here with the circle the orange circle so if you want to replicate it exactly the width is 95.3 and the height is 521. We can turn down the width segments and the height segments to one. And that is our first reflective board. So that's gonna create some nice reflections along the body of our snake. Also, this light is gonna bounce light off our reflective board and bounce it back towards our snake as well. So let's jump back into our camera. Now we don't want to see this. So what we can do is we can go and right click on a reflective board, go to Cinema 4D Tags and create a compositing tag. And then if we click on the tag object, we can turn off scene by camera. And also we can hide it from the viewport if we just double click on this visibility tag here at the top one and then we won't see it in our viewport. So let's do a quick render to picture viewer here and see what we got. So this was our last render without our reflective board. And now this is our new one. So you can see the differences that is making. Um, again, we still have our graininess. Anti-aliasing is turned off. Let's just turn it on so we can see what it's looking like. Set it to best and four by. We'll go two by two for now. We're, we're eventually going to bring it up to four by four. But for now, we'll just go two by two. Uh, just to save a bit of time. And now you can see the difference that that is making. So you can see that our snake body is actually intersecting our floor. So we will fix that right now. So let's go and select our spline. Remember that our spline controls the position of our snake. Let's jump into our front, our right view. And let's just drag this up a little bit. So it looks like our floor is here. Actually, it doesn't look like there was any intersection there, so I'm just going to jump back in and I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Let's try and find a better camera view. Delete my protection tag and I'm going to find a nice camera view here. So let's try this one. And let's do a render preview or rendered picture viewer here. Let's see what that looks like. This is our last render. The camera angle wasn't the best. And this is our latest one. So that's looking pretty cool. Now again, a lot of graininess. It will be solved once anti-aliasing is set to 4x4. And also, we need to get some nice rim along the edge of our snake to kind of separate it from the background. So what we can do is 
we can create another reflective board. So let's make this visible again. And let's just hold down control. Now make sure that your world uh, or your coordinate system is set to world. Uh, you can turn that on and off. And then hold down control and let's just drag this over. I'm going to rotate this around to point at our snake. And make sure that it's behind your light. Otherwise it's going to block the light. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. So let's activate our camera again and we'll just do a render to picture viewer on that. See what it looks like. So our anti-aliasing is turned up again, so, well, it's set to two by two, so that's why the render is taking a bit longer. Now, what we can see is we're getting this white reflection of our reflective board on our floor, so we don't want that. So we're going to turn that off. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to let this render out. So we need to exclude our reflective boards from our floor so what we can do is we can create a compositing tag on our floor and if we jump into exclusion we can then drag our reflective boards into our floor compositing tags exclusion tab so just select the two of them, drag them in there. So now if we do another render on that, that should have solved our problem. And it hasn't, of course. Okay, so there is another way of doing this. I'm just going to undo what I have done. And I'm going to go into my reflective boards compositing tags. And let's try and exclude the floor from our reflective board. So actually, this is the way I should have done it. So this is going to exclude. This is a symbol for reflection. So it's going to exclude our floor from reflecting our reflective boards. So if we render that again. That should have done it. Yep, yeah, that's done it. All right. Okay, cool. So now you can see that our reflective boards are no longer being reflected by our floor. And that is some happy days. So we're getting close to the look we're going for. Um, we need to turn, we need to crank up anti aliasing because that graininess is going to get annoying after a while. We'll do another render to picture viewer and see how this looks. So look at the difference in that graininess already. Um, I'm thinking maybe one more reflective board just above our snake possibly could look good. I mean it's looking pretty good as it is to be fair. But maybe one more reflective board above our snake. Let's just try that. And if we don't like it, you know, we can just get rid of it. So let's grab this one. Hold down control, drag it up along the Y. Drag it here along the X. And I'm just going to make sure it's above our light so that it doesn't block it. And let's just rotate that so that it's pointing down towards our snake. Let's go into our active. Let's make our camera active again and let's just see what that looks like. So hopefully that looks a bit better because our last render, it's looking good. Um, it's looking good, but you know what? I think that new reflective board isn't actually making much of a difference. To be fair, it doesn't seem to be making any of a difference. Um, but I'm going to leave it there anyway, because it's not hurting our scene. So we can move on. 
I want to create a bit of bump. So jump into your body material, turn on bump. Let's create a layer shader. And let's jump into it, create a noise. Let's set it to, I don't know, uh, hammer. No, not hammer. We'll go for electric and we'll set the global scale to about 60. Let's bring up the contrast and bring down the high clip. Now let's jump back and we need to create a layer mask just so that, so this is gonna create, not create noise along the body of our snake. So wherever there's white, there's gonna be noise. And we don't want there to be this, you know, continuous pattern of noise. I'll just do a quick render to picture viewer here. While that's loading, we don't want a continuous pattern of noise. We just want this noise to be in certain areas kind of on and off. So we need to create another noise shader and drag it beneath our noise that we just created and set this blending mode here to layer mask. Now we can control with this mask where our noise shader that we just created is gonna be applied. So let's set this to wavy turbulence, maybe displaced gaseous. Yeah, that seems good. Let's crank up the scale to 600, maybe 300, maybe 400. So the black areas is going to turn off the bump. And let's make sure that we have a bit more black areas by cranking up the contrast there. Let's reduce the high clip so that where our bump is applied, it's really visible. I'm going to crank up the contrast a bit more. Let's go back and back again and let's set the strength of this to be 10%. Now let's see what we got. Render to picture viewer on that. That is still calculating, wow. Okay, so this, yeah, so I hit the render to picture viewer so you could see what the bump looks like if it's just turned on without that layer mask. So now if we render this with the layer mask turned on, you'll see that it makes a huge difference. So give it time because, you know, beauty, beauty, takes time i don't know does it maybe it does but you can see the difference that that's making um straight away we got some bumpiness in some of the areas as opposed to bumpiness covering our whole snake so it's looking more realistic and just cool basically we're almost at the end of this. We just need to turn on our diffusion. I'm wondering if I even should because we're 34 minutes and this is already looking pretty damn cool. Let's see. Okay, let's turn it on. We're going to turn on diffusion and we're going to add a noise. And we're going to set it to... Uh, gaseous let's crank up the contrast reduce the or increase the low clip so now where there's white areas there's gonna be a bit of diffusion happen happening that's looking pretty cool already to be fair so let's do a render uh, to picture viewer on this so we can see the difference that the diffusion channel is making and we'll see if it's worth adding or not. So as I'm flicking between the last render and the current one, you can kind of see what diffusion is doing. It's kind of making some irregularities in our, in our reflections, we'll say. It's adding to the overall realism of it. I mean, look at this scale here. 
this is without diffusion oh sorry without diffusion and with diffusion without and with so you can see that you know I don't know if I like it or not but I'm gonna leave it turned on actually yeah no I'm leaving it turned on I'm, it's it's staying on and that is pretty much it that's our snake um, textured up and our our scene is lit and it's good to go we just need to animate this we're not going to do it right now we're doing that in the next video well, we didn't actually do anything with our with our eyes so we need to texture up our eyes so let's jump into our eyes material let's turn on Turn off the default specular inside the reflectance channel. Let's add a Beckman. Let's turn down the reflection strength just a tad. And we can set the roughness to be 15%. And let's set the attenuation here to additive. Let's bring the color to a kind of a reddish color just to kind of make the snake look really evil and also to get a bit of cool contrast between the body of our snake and its eyeball so let's see what this is looking like did we even turn up anti-aliasing to form i think we did we did didn't we yeah we did okay because if we didn't oh man we'd be getting some serious serious render quality but we did so in the next part we're going to be animating our snake and then we're going to be done so that's it for this one guys and hopefully i will see you in the next video okay guys so before we move on i just want to make a couple of changes to the lighting setup um just some minor adjustments i want to grab my reflective board one and i want to grab my light one and i'm just going to bring these down and kind of closer to my snake and i also want to move it up closer to the head of my snake and I'm going to hit R my keyboard and rotate that just a little bit. Actually, just the tiniest bit. So by minus three degrees. Okay, and I want to grab my light two and my reflective board. Now I'm holding down shift to select two objects at once, light two and my reflective board two. And just drag it down. We're gonna go close to our snake. We're gonna bring it over to the front of our snake and I'm just gonna hit R to rotate that, to point it towards our snake. So this is the kind of setup we're dealing with. And I want to make some adjustments to the floor. I'm going to go into the reflectance here and I'm going to set the roughness to 10%. And let's actually do a quick render of this, see what it looks like. So you can see the difference that that those movements to our lights and reflective boards have made to our scene. So basically lighting is quite a big deal. And also uh, reducing the roughness of the floor um, has also actually helped a lot. But yeah, lighting has made a huge difference there um, to our scene. Uh, I want to also reduce the, um, so the scales in the bottom of our snake, 
I want to reduce the height at which the geometry is pushed up here at the bottom. So I want to basically flatten the scales on the bottom of our snake because in real life the belly of the snake is kind of flat whereas the top of the snake is kind of like what we have it here so we're just going to reduce the displacement just along the belly here of the snake so to do that open up the body material and go into your displacement channel we want to put this into a layer shader so just click on this triangle here and click on layer that will automatically put our displacement map into this layer shader. Now we can add a gradient shader and just bring it underneath our bitmap. Set it to layer mask. So we want to turn on, we want to set the smaller scales to be black. So that will basically um, reduce the displacement or turn it off completely. So we need to make sure that if we just jump into our gradient here set the type to 2 dv and let's bring the white into the middle and hold down control on not one and just click and drag now if we right click in here and go to distribute knots that'll put the white in the middle and even even everything out so now you can see that our displacement is being turned off here and here we can actually just bring these points closer to the white area to actually turn it off even closer to turn off more of the smaller scales okay so let's do a render on that actually let's set up our camera to where we want it to be uh, for our animation so our camera is going to go Let's say about here. This is where our starting point is going to be, and we'll do a render to picture viewer on that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. You can see that the belly of the snake now has actually been flattened compared to the previous image where it's way too bumpy. Um, so that's looking good. So now we're going to set up our animation. So we want to animate our snake. We want to animate the spline wraps offset. So select your spline wrap, jump into your object tab, and we're gonna set this to, so this is what we're gonna be animating basically. So our snake's gonna animate across like that. So we need to first of all increase the size of our, of our spline. So jump into your top view, middle mouse click, and then go into your top view. And let's just add on to this spline. So with your spline selected, you can then grab your spline arc tool. And we want to just kind of follow this pattern as best we can. So just click on the end point here. And now I'm just going to create some more arcs. Now with the with the arc spline tool, you can't just click. You have to kind of click and drag just a little bit. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Same again. Click and drag just a little bit. And again, click and drag. And I'm just going to go for another couple of them. Because it's better to have more than have less. Okay. So that should be enough. So let's jump back into perspective. Go into our spline wrap tool. And let's set a keyframe here at minus 14% on frame 0. Let's increase our frame range to 300 frames. Drag that out. Let's go to the last frame. And let's bring our offset. I'm just going to deactivate my camera for now. Bring our offset up to about, let's say... 30% and let's add another keyframe so now this is what we got now our animation is easing in and we don't want it to so hit shift F3 in your keyboard and that is going to show us our dope sheet so what we want to do is just hit L on our keyboard and then we can set our interpolation here to linear Alternatively, you can just click on this 
linear button here. And now there's going to be no easing in or out. So that snake is moving a bit too slowly. So what I want to do is Shift F3 on my keyboard. I'm just going to bring this, drag these end frames down to about 150. Let's see what that looks like. So that's going a bit faster. Let's also hover over this icon here. Hold down your click and turn off all frames. That's going to give us an exact idea of how fast our snake is actually moving. Because Cinema 4D isn't going to try and play every single frame. So we're going to get a more accurate playback of timing. So that's too fast now. So we might actually go back up to 300. I should have done that at the start. Yeah, so that's actually exactly what we're looking for. That speed. Maybe even a bit slower. So we might go to 400 frames. And let's just drag that last frame up to 400. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, so that speed is about what I'm going for on that. Okay, so now we need to animate our camera. So let's make it active. And we want it to, we want our snake to be in our shot for our first frame. So let's drag it along the Z until your snake head is in the center of your shot. So that's going to be minus three, uh, three, five centimeters. And let's add a keyframe there. And also, as our camera's following our snake head, we also want our whole lighting setup to follow our camera. So we need to make our lighting set up a child of the camera so it'll follow our camera wherever it goes. So let's just grab everything in our lighting setup. Hit Alt G. That'll add everything into a null. We can just call that light team. And let's just make it a child of the camera. So now that wherever our camera goes, our lighting will follow. So we will set a keyframe here in our camera. Oh, so it's already set on frame zero. We've set a keyframe here at 135 centimeters. And now we're going to go to frame 400, wherever our last keyframe of our spline wrap is. So that's 400. And then we're going to find our snake head again, make sure that it's in the center of our shot, and then add another keyframe. So now, if we play that, so now you can see our snake actually takes off before our camera does because our camera animation is easing in. So hit Shift F3 in your keyboard and just hit the linear interpolation button there and that will remove the easing in and out of your camera's animation. Now let's try that again. So now you can see the lighting setup is following the snake. Well, it's following the camera and the camera is following the snake. So that is good to go. What we can do now is just do a quick uh, test render on a random frame. I'm going to go for 254. Just to make sure that everything is still looking good before you send this out to render. So that's looking really, co really cool. I'm really happy with the style. Um, so this is ready to go, guys. I mean, let's see if we just play this out. It goes to frame 400, and, and that's your animation. So all you have to do is make sure that you save your scene. Control S. I'm going to do a save as, and I'm going to call this animation. And I want to go into my output here, set it to 1920 by 1080. I want to render all frames. Anti-aliasing is set to 1x1, one 4x4. One, four four. And we need to save this to a PNG sequence to a location of your choice. I'm just going to put this on my desktop. And I'm going to call it sequence. 
And that is it. Okay. So I'm going to save that again, control S, and I'm going to go to render queue. And I want to add this to the render queue and hit start rendering. And that's it guys. Hope you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video.